Hey guys, Brandonia21 here, and um, right now I'm going to start with how to create your own software for free, part 3. Um, I already have it written down what I'm going to discuss in this tutorial, and that's going to be the if command, um, anchoring, and how to use variables. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that is good, because by the end of this video, you will have a 100% idea what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do is open up our project that we've been working on. Um, I think I fixed my screen recorder, so we'll record the form when it's transparent. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is anchor our project. Now, what is anchoring? Um, well, if you notice, when we uh, make the form bigger, I'm going to give it some time to do this. When we make the form bigger, we have to resize these separately. Now, anchoring takes the components inside the form and actually uh, in a sense glues them, anchors them to the side of the form where we want it to. So um, the anchoring will make it so once we resize the form these come along with it. Okay so what we're gonna do is go into properties of this text box, scroll up to where we see anchoring and we choose the menu and then it, we already know that it's anchored to the top and it's anchored to the left which means if we move the left of the form or the top of the form the text box will come along, along with it but we want to also anchor it to the right so now if we make it small and make it big it'll come with the form now we want to make it as big as the form right there so now it comes with the form but if you notice the button doesn't doesn't do that so we're going to anchor with the form or with the button. So just do the same thing. Click on the button, go into properties, go under anchoring, and we're going to choose right and bottom. Okay, we're going to make it the size of the form. Now, if you notice, we move this submit button, gets bigger, which we don't really want. Okay, we can undo. We'll select the text box and we'll choose anchoring bottom. Let's we'll see if that does anything. Whoa. Okay, so I guess it doesn't really. Let's see here. Whoops. Okay, well, we're not going to anchor it to the bottom. Okay, okay. Now, this will work really good if you're making a notepad um, or anything like that, which we will be doing in part. Um, Part six, we're going to be making a notepad. Okay, so now that we have our form anchored, um, we can start coding with the new coding we're going to be using, which is using the if command. So what we're going to do is have uh, it involving this text box again, and then the button. So we're going to double click on the button, so the code happens when you click on the button. And we're going to delete the residue from our previous project. Now, in um, Visual Basic 2008, which is what we're using, the dim command, once it loads here, the dim command creates a variable and then it has you declare it as what it is. So we're going to dim the variable hello as a string. A string is a variable that can hold anything, okay, numbers, letters, you name it. So what we're pretty much saying is, hey, program, make a variable called hello and make it a string okay so that code tells it to do that now if we look down in our error list it says warning unused local variable hello that's because we needed to make it something so what we're gonna do is make hello equal to one two three now the variable hello equals one two three now if we say message box hello without the quotations because this is a variable and then run the project sometimes it just takes forever for this project to go sorry about that
Okay, so once the project's here, you'll notice that once we uh, change the size of this, the text box and button come along with it. Same when we go up. Oh, not when we go up. Okay, but when we go left too, and the text box comes along with it. But what we're going to do is press the submit button and see if the code we just typed works. Now, if you notice, here's the code. We press submit and it types and it gives a message box with one two three. Now that's because we made hello one two three and we told the message box to appear with hello, which is pretty much telling it to appear with one two three. Now we can also add and subtract variables. So what we're gonna do is make another variable. This one's gonna be hello two as string dim hello to as string. Now we're going to make hello equal to 5 and hello to equal to 4. Then we're going to dim one more variable, dim equals as string. So then after all this we could type equals equals hello plus hello to. Now in the message box command we could just tell it to say equals. Now in theory, it dims all these, then it makes hello two four, hello five, and then it makes equals hello plus hello two. So it makes the variable equals four plus five, which is nine. So in theory, once we press the button, a message box should pop up saying nine. Correct? Let's start debugging. Okay, now let's press the button. And it says uh, 54. Now, why does it say 54 instead of 9? Well, because it is taking these and adding them together. So, 4 plus 5. Now, that's because it's a string, and if the string contained words, it would be, um, it would add together the words. Like, if string, if hello2 was hello2 and hello was hello, it would message box hello to hello so to fix this we're gonna make dim hello to as an integer hello is an integer whoops and equals an integer so in theory now it should message box 9 correct let's see we're gonna start debugging and we press submit and it says 9 would you look at that simply because it is adding two integers together to equal nine. Well, that's all we're going to cover in this video since we are running out of time. Um, this, this video, you just learned how to use variables, how to add them together, and how to make a result appear on your screen. Okay? So thanks for watching this tutorial, and have a good day.